Okay, so we have uh, someone again from Sydney next. His name is Eric Mastro. He'll be talking about Embark Core uh, for status. And welcome on stage, please. What's up, EdCon? How's everyone doing? All right. That's what I'm talking about. It's sunny outside. You guys are stuck in here with me. Uh, uh, my name is Eric Mastro. I'm a core contributor for the Embark framework at Status. Um, today is a talk on uh, for all the DAP devs in here. Um, I'm going to show you some of the cool features of Embark 4. Show of hands quickly. Anybody heard of Embark? Oh, wow. That's good. Anybody used Embark? Yeah, nice. That's cool. Thank you. Um, all right, so for those of you who have not heard or used Embark before, Embark is a fast, simple, and powerful framework to help you develop, deploy, and deploy fully decentralized applications. Embark, Embark puts the full Web3 stack in your hands, uh, allowing you to leverage things like decentralized storage, like IPFS and Swarm, decentralized communications like Whisper, ENS, smart contract compilation and deploy. Uh, and it puts all this, packages it up into its own JavaScript API called Embark.js and makes it available in your DAP. But today I'm gonna show you some of the cooler features of our latest version of Embark. So we listened to you guys, listened to the community. We spent months developing version four. It was even back at DevCon, I think we were like, we released the alpha version, so this is months ago. Um, and we've created a better version of, uh, of Embark. Um, honestly, it's really cool. Uh, since we've only got a few minutes together, I'm gonna show you like the top three things. First thing we've got is Cockpit. So what is Cockpit? It's, uh, it's a web-based interface uh, that gives you access to the Embark process and all the processes it manages, like, like Geth and IPFS, things like that. Uh, it's, it's your command center for building, debugging, and deploying decentralized applications. I'm gonna talk more about the debugging stuff in a minute. Uh, it's got a block explorer, you can view accounts, transactions, interact with contracts, among, among so many other useful things. Uh, but one of the best parts is the integrated debugger in the built-in editor, which we're gonna get to in a minute. So, debugger. Uh, so we, you can use, inside of Embark, you can use Embugger, uh, the debugger, <laughs> the Embugger. You can use the debugger inside of the command line, or you can use it in Cockpit itself. And again, I'm gonna show you this in a minute. It's really cool. Uh, and if that wasn't enough for its own version, we now support uh, front-end build tools like uh, Create React App or Vue.js. And this is kind of a, yeah, this is a pain point before, but now if you want to use Create React App, Vue.js, and uh, Angular CLI, that's all good. Go for it. Uh, Embark will do the rest for you. All right, so what have I got for you today? So I've got a demo. Uh, this is a demo. This is like a screenshot of the, the actual demo dap. Uh, it was created with Create React App. Very basic little site, it's got very limited functionality. Uh, there's three little things you can do with it. On the top right, you'll see a plus button. You can create posts. First of all, it's decentralized Reddit. So if you have, if you have a problem with that, then you know, take it online. Go to Reddit and complain about it. Many people did already. Um, yeah, so you can create posts with that little plus button. You can search for posts, and you can upvote and down, downvote posts using the buttons on each post. So it's nothing crazy, a little simple demo. Uh, if you want to build your own dreddit, uh, just for like, just for the experience and see how it works, just scan that QR code on the left. Uh, uh, my colleague Pascal wrote like a series of three blogs. They're really, really good. They get down into the nitty gritty. They explain everything uh, step by step. Uh, so I definitely recommend that. And also, if you want the source code for this demo that you're going to see here, scan that QR code on the right, or just go to GitHub uh, Embark Framework. 
Um, okay, so what we're looking at, look, and I do apologize if this video, I want to start and stop it, and sometimes it doesn't necessarily work, so if it doesn't work, I'm sorry. Um, but basically what we're looking at here is VS, is VS Code. It's, our, it's our, our favorite IDE loading up our DAP, right? So what does this DAP have? It's got a contract, right? So there's nothing crazy about it. Like, I don't want to get into too much detail. It, this DAP, again, was built with Create React App, but notice it has a contract. Uh, we've got two terminals running inside of VS Code. On the left, we've got the output of Create React App. So it's compiled our, our, our files for us and uh, started a web server on port 3001. Again, bare bones, nothing crazy there. On the right, we've got Embark's output. So we ran Embark over the DAP. Uh, you can see that it's started up Geth, it's started up IPFS, and it did Whisper. It's compiled and deployed our contracts for us. And most importantly, it started up Cockpit for us. So it started up a web server on 5.5.5.5.5, and it gave us an auth token that we can use to get into Cockpit. So if we go to localhost 5.5.5.5.5, you can see here that gets us into Cockpit. So this is the dashboard of Cockpit. What are we looking at quickly? I'll just take you through just a really brief overview of like some of the things you can do, and it's not even all of it. Um, at the top, you can see a list of services that have been started. So we've got the Embark process itself. You've got Geth, you've got IPFS, you've got the API that runs Cockpit, and Whisper. Uh, just below that, you've got the console. So that's essentially a mirror of the output of Embark plus an integrated uh, interactive console at the bottom. So this gives us like access to Web3, to our contracts, to some of the custom commands that we've got uh, from plugins. Uh, from, you can write your own as well. Um, so for example, if we typed in, oh, that's exactly what I uh, didn't want to happen. S excuse me. <laughs> Sorry. Let's restart that. OK. Here we are. So. We got our services. Now we type in help. There it is. So we've got a list of all the commands that we can run inside of Embark, right? So you can start and stop the API, you can add plugins, you can debug, you can register subdomains through ENS, you can do a whole bunch of stuff. Uh, like I said, you can interact with Web3. So let's say we wanted to get the default account in the node, web3.eth.default account. Notice the autocomplete. And there you go. If we want to interact with our, our deployed contract. We can do that going by saying, okay, dreadit, which is our deployed contract. Let's say, let's get a list of all the methods in the contract. So dreadit.methods, and it spits out a list of all the methods. So you've got the create method, you've got get vote, num posts, vote, et cetera, right? So again, noticing the autocomplete, let's say we want to actually get the number of posts stored in the contract. We can say dreadit.methods.numPosts. We can call it, and we can get three. So we've got three posts in our contract. So that's pretty cool. Moving on, uh, down below that, we've got a list of our contracts that have been deployed by the node. Uh, so here, we, inside the contract view, if we drill down, we can see a list of all those methods again, but we can actually interact with them. So a very quick example, we can do the numpost interaction again. Just click it, call it, and again, we get three. So that's pretty cool. Go over to the details tab. We've got our ABI, our bytecode. We can expand the ABI, get like individual values. We can copy out individual, individual values. We can copy out the whole thing, copy out the bytecode, um, which is al always useful. And the cool thing here is we got a log. So any interaction we've done with the contract, we've got a log of it. So if it's a call or if it's an actual transaction, it's all listed here. We can filter these transactions by the method that was called. Uh, so for example, we can say like create. We can filter by the create method. And again, we've got three. So we have three posts, we have three create calls. We can filter by events. So this is, I think someone at DevCon was asking about this. You can actually filter by events that have been emitted in transactions. So every time we, we do a create transaction, we emit a new post event, and they're all listed there. So next thing is the Explorer view. So we go over to Explorer. Uh, this is the Explorer dashboard. This just very briefly shows you accounts, blocks, and transactions. We can drill down into an account. So you can see things like an account, like the balance and transaction count. If we drill down into it, again, show details of the, trend of the account and all of its transactions. We can drill down into a block, see the block details and all of its transactions. Uh, and then finally, we can drill down into a transaction. So see its details. And again, you can like deep link into associated uh, objects like the from and to accounts and the block and stuff like that. It's all kind of linked up. 
Uh, one thing to quickly notice is that there is this little debug button there on the transaction. So any transaction that's debuggable, it's got this cool little debug button, and I'm gonna get to that coming up now. So that's a quick overview of, of the cockpit. Um, now, if we go over to the editor, this is the built-in editor in Cockpit, right? So it looks very similar to our VS Code setup. Uh, on the left, you can see the same file structure, and you can see our contract loaded up. On the right-hand side, you can see a previewable browser. So this is a hot reloadable browser. So, excuse me, no notice how uh, we've loaded up localhost 3001. That's the Create React app port that was opened up for us, right? So that's hot reloadable, and you can see our DAP there running. So what I've done is I've kind of broken it. I've broken our contract on purpose. We're gonna to try to create a post. It's gonna fail. And then we're gonna debug it, right? And we're gonna do that all without leaving the cockpit. I'm gonna show you how it works. Cool, so let's add a post. Type in title description. And try to, try to publish that. Transaction's been reverted by the EVM. So what, what do you do now? So you start, usually everyone, they start commenting out lines of code, they recompile, redeploy, and then try a new transaction and see if, it fi see if it fixes it. We don't have to do that anymore. So let's check it out what Embark has done for us. So quickly we're gonna jump back over to VS Code just to see the term. And you can see here that Embark has picked up this failed transaction for us, and it's pointed exactly to the failing line. That's pretty cool. Right, shows us here that the require, this require failed. And if you look at the bottom, you can see some of the variables that were kind of involved in this failure, or sort of at, at the time of failure. Right, so let's go back over to cockpit. Yeah, and we're gonna go to this, this log. Again, this is the, the interaction log with the contract. And you can see that last, that top line there, that's the failing transaction that we just performed. And conveniently, it has a debug button. That's pretty cool. So we click debug, and Cockpit will take us directly to the failing line in our source code, right? So it's exactly the line that Embark picked up, line 46, it's that require statement. And it'll show us on the, on the right-hand side, it shows us all of the data that we need to help debug this transaction. So uh, we can see some of our contract variables, like posts, it's just, a, just an array of our posts in the contract. Uh, it's uh, some Solidity globals like block hash and timestamp that happened at the time of transaction, and some of our local variables like IPFS hash that were passed into the create function. So now that we've got all this information, we've got all of our variable information, we know the line of code that failed, now we can figure out actually what happened and fix it. So first we can kill our uh, uh, debug session and figure it out. So what I was trying to do, this is a bit of a contrived example, like it's probably not gonna happen out in the wild too much, but um, basically what I was trying to do with this require was say, was validate that the IPFS hash passed in was actually had a length, you know, that there was something passed in. We wanna make sure that we create a post only when we have an IPFS hash, right? So we've got, we're, we're kind of ensuring that we've got this length of our IP, RPFS hash equals zero. That's wrong. We should require that the length of our IPFS hash is greater than zero. Again, not a great example, but it works, right? So let's fix it. So let's change that equals to a greater than. And then we're gonna save it. So this saves the file, it persists it to the disk. You can see if we go back over to VS Code, we can see that these changes were persisted, right? And Embark picks up this change, you can see at the bottom, recompiles our contract for us, redeploys it, and do you see how Create React app just refreshed there? Embark will also output some uh, artifacts into our source code for us. Co uh, Create React app will then recompile and it will reload our hot reloadable DAP inside a cockpit. So if we go back over to cockpit, you can see that our DAP is reloading, or has reloaded. It's reloading. Perfect. So now it's reloaded. So what have we done? We just we just had a failing transaction, right? And Bart picked up this failing transaction automatically for us. We fixed that transaction, or sorry, we fixed the, we fixed the require statement that was calling, causing the failing transaction. We saved it, persisted, everything got persisted to disk, and Bart picked up those changes, it redeployed our contract for us after compiling. Create React app refreshed our DAP for us. So now we've got a chance to try this transaction again. 
Let's give it a crack. And boom, it worked. That's pretty cool. I think that's pretty awesome. I, I was happy to see that. I can see you guys are too. Thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> so we, we did all of that. We debugged the transaction, we saved everything, everything got refreshed for us, and we didn't even have to leave the cockpit. Uh, that's pretty cool. So you can kind of see like the direction that Embark is going to help improve the developer experience. Um, this is just the tip of the iceberg. We've got a lot more features coming, um, and uh, we're really excited to be able to share them with you. If anybody has any suggestions or comments, we're always willing to listen. We're always available on, um, on the Status app, which is bridged over to Gitter as well, so you can get us on Gitter. Um, and if you want to try out Embark, please do. Uh, just npm install it into your dApp. Uh, if you want to try out some of the beta releases that we've got um, releasing all the time, just use the at next tag, and that should get it into your dap for us, or for you. Thank you very much. I see you have some fans around here. Mm -hmm. um, so it's really interesting. So why, so I really like that it's called decentralized Reddit, um, and why did you say that people would not like it and would complain about it? I sort of didn't uh, understand. This is a good question. Yeah, sorry. There's more of a reference. Like, uh, we, so my colleague Pascal actually he released these blog posts on our, uh, actually put it on Reddit, saying, hey guys, there's a tutorial on how to build a decentralized Reddit dApp. And people didn't even look at the post and click the link as usual, they just trolled, right? So they trolled Pascal and like, it actually went viral on Reddit. Um, people complained, why would you decentralize Reddit? It doesn't make any sense, are you gonna, you're trying to ICO? That kind of stuff. Okay. And um, I was more thinking about copyright laws, actually. I mean, uh, that's like someone's trademark. But yeah, I mean, that's yeah. the lawyer in you coming yeah, out, isn't that's, it? <laughs> I'm a recovering lawyer. That was yeah, just cool. something quite interesting that just sort of just popped up. Yeah, um, cool. So you may not like this question, but I wanted to, and it's not like the main um, point of your presentation, but how does what you work fit into status overall? Yeah, that's a really good question. Um, it, and probably a lot of people are confused about this, but status is, so most people know status based on their messenger. Um, so Status has got an instant messaging platform. It's, it's, it's an app that you can send money, uh, you, can, you can buy things through dApps. Um, so one of, the, one of the kind of big parts about that application is that it requires dApps to really kind of fit into the big ecosystem and get a broad range of people. So without dApps, sort of Status, you know, is a bit uh, on the back foot. So uh, basically Status invested in, uh, uh, in Bark and Bark the, the project itself to try to help dApps become more developable. It's like a, it was sort of like, we're gonna invest in developer tools to help dApp devs build dApps, because without them, we're not really not gonna succeed. So it was sort of like this, um, yeah, it's sort, of like, it's sort of like a public infrastructure, you know? Without the infrastructure, sort of everyone's gonna kind of fail, so yeah. Great, thanks so much, appreciate Thank it. Thank you. Great.